This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet, a slim front pocket wallet available in carbon fiber and titanium. With more than 250,000 sold, a lifetime guarantee and free shipping, get 10% off with the code GOLDFISH at RidgeWallet.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another Challenger Deck upgrade video. So if you happen to miss yesterday's video, Upgrading Hazaret Aggro, make sure to check that out. We're basically doing these upgrades all this week in place of our instant deck techs. If you are a lover of instant deck techs, don't worry, the jank will return next week. We're not getting rid of instant deck techs. This is just a one week special thing. So anyway, today we're going to upgrade our second of the four challenger decks second sun control so second sun control is an interesting deck it's basically the control deck of the challenger deck cycle so if you like drawing lots of cards countering your opponent's stuff trying to win in the late 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 game second sun control is probably the challenger deck for you so as far as the strengths of the deck there are two big ones really first off the deck is super consistent because it has a ton of card draw you have actual card draw like glimmer of genius and opt and then you have a ton of cycling cards. So your hand's always going to be full. You're always going to be churning through your deck to find action. The other big benefit of this deck is out of all the challenger decks, second sub control is the cheapest deck to upgrade into its fully optimal form. It actually doesn't take that much money on top of your challenger deck purchase to turn second sub control into the fully powered version of blue white cycling, blue white approach. On the other hand, there's a couple of big disadvantages or weaknesses to second sub control number one as far as gameplay it doesn't really have a backup plan in the main deck you are all in on approach of the second sun and you don't have another way of winning the game so keep that in mind you do have some stuff in the sideboard but in the main deck it is approach or bust the other thing is as far as upgrading the deck fully powered second sub control or blue white cycling whatever is the lowest tier of any of the challenger decks all the other challenger decks if you fully upgrade them they end up being legitimate tier 1 tier 1.5 decks second sub control even in its most optimal form is kind of like a tier 2 tier 2.5 deck right now so while it's nice that you can upgrade it really cheaply the downside is you're going to get the worst fully upgraded version out of any of the challenger decks anyway as far as upgrades Second side control upgrades in a really weird manner when we're looking to add $20 to the budget. So spend 30 for the deck, 20 more in upgrades. The first thing we do is kind of give the deck a backup plan. So we add in Drakehaven and Abandoned Sarcophagus. These cards give us a backup way of winning the game. And the nice thing about these cards is they're really cheap. They're like almost bulk rares, essentially. So throw in some Drakehavens, throw in some Abandoned Sarcophaguses. It doesn't really add much to the budget. And we can win just by cycling our cards and making a bunch of Drakes or getting all of our cycling cards back from the graveyard for just a massive advantage so that's kind of the first step to the upgrading then we have a ton of really really cheap small upgrades so to support our drake havens and our abandoned sarcophaguses we need as many of our cycling cards as possible so for example we drop glimmer of geniuses for hieroglyphic illumination we drop our non-cycling counter spells like supreme will for countervailing wins we max out on renewed phase we even add in some of the cycling deserts the nice thing about all those upgrades is they're basically bulk commons and uncommon so they add very very little to our budget you might even be able to find them as draft leftovers and then the big money upgrades we add in two more copies of settle the wreckage which is really key for the deck it's like Six dollars a copy you get one with a challenger deck itself so two more copies is going to be around 12 bucks and then we add in two more glacial fortresses which combined with all those bulk rare bulk common and uncommon upgrades puts us to about 20 bucks altogether and gives us second sub control 20 dollar upgrade version which is basically still blue white approach but it's actually blue white cycling we can still win with approach but we have a ton of cycling cards and we have a legitimate backup plan with getting our drake havens down and winning that way so that is the path i would go for upgrading you're gonna need to buy a lot of new cards for the upgrade a lot of those like cheap cycling cards however most of those cards are really really cheap you might already have them sitting around from drafts or whatever so the actual cost isn't very much even though it's a lot of cards you gotta get as far as 
taking this upgraded version and making it fully powered, there's actually not a ton we gotta do. The big card for the fully upgraded version is Search for Ascanta. You usually need about two copies of Search for Ascanta, and Search for Ascanta is legitimately expensive, $10, $15, somewhere in that range. So you're gonna have to put out money for that to get the fully powered version. Otherwise, there's some weird fringe cards. Nimble Obstructionist, not very expensive. Authority of the Council is really helpful in the sideboard for the mono red matchup. A River's Rebuke, but these cards don't really cost much, so if you take and add in a couple of Search for Ascantas and a handful of sideboard cards, you actually end up with fully powered blue-white cycling for not much money at all. The only real cost to this is the two copies of Search for Ascanta, which sees modern play. It's not rotating out of standard for a long time, so it's a pretty good investment anyway. So that is the upside of blue-white cycling. For not much money, maybe a total of like $50 to $60 on top of buying the actual deck, you're going to end up with the legit best possible version of blue-white cycling slash blue-white approach. The downside is, like we talked about before, blue-white cycling slash blue-white approach used to be really good in standard. People have kind of figured out how to compete with it, and it doesn't line up that well with the meta right now. However, for the price, you can't really beat it. For $30 for the deck, plus adding in maybe another $60, you're looking at under $100 to have not a tier 1 deck, but a tier 2 deck for the standard format that's going to last for the next six months, and then the most expensive cards, Search for Ascanta, is still going to be in the format, so you're still going to have that after rotation this fall, which makes investment even better. So anyway, that's upgrading Second Sun Control, the Challenger Deck Edition. So if you have some other ideas for good upgrades, let me know in the comments or other ways you can take advantage of the cards from the cycling deck. Let me know that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.